acetone, butanol, and ethanol fermentation. Prepared and presented by Ian Lee, Paola Mendoza Moreno, Jack Mira, Robert Morgan. For CBE 452, Spring 2021. We'll begin by discussing the background of ABE fermentation and the motivations for future applications. Origins of ABE fermentation. The ABE fermentation process is one of the earliest industrial fermentation processes developed and implemented on a large scale. ABE fermentation was originally pioneered by Louis Bestro in 1861 to produce butanol, a useful solvent and fuel, from biological sources. Later, an Austrian biochemist, Franz Schrodinger, discovered that acetone could also be produced by the same fermentation process. Another important discovery surrounding the ABE fermentation process was the isolation of Clostridium acetobutylicum, the strain of bacterium used still today for the ABE fermentation by Chom Wiseman in 1912. After World War II, the ABE fermentation process was displaced by the petro-based production systems which were far less expensive to operate. Motivation for future applications of ABE fermentation. The greatest potential motivations for future applications of ABE fermentation process surrounds mitigating carbon emissions and the overuse of fossil fuels. Acetone, butanol, and ethanol have great potential as biological fuels to accommodate or replace petro-based fuels. With rising global temperatures, processes which act on a carbon cycle, like fermentation, rather than a carbon sink, like petrochemical processes, are becoming more and more socially favored. We will now consider the market conditions and competitive technologies for ABE fermentation. As we transition to considering the economics of ABE fermentation, it is important to compare it to its largest competitor, petroleum, and its future as an energy source. These three figures are projections from the U.S. Department of Energy for oil production, petroleum consumption, and biofuel percentage of motor gasoline for three different economic climates in the future. The general trend observed is that the petroleum demand and usage is only going to increase in the next 30 years and that there will be larger requirements for biofuels in motor gasoline to meet this increased demand. These figures are historical prices for ABE products compared to gasoline. From these figures, it can be observed that the market prices for the products of ABE fermentation maintained their current value or even slightly decreased over the span of 12 months. This is in stark contrast to the figure representing gasoline prices, which steadily increase in growth. Additionally, as technologies for the production and refinement of biofuels continue to develop, the cost of production will continue to decrease. In combination with the previous figures from the Department of Energy, it is reasonable to predict that within the next 30 years we will reach a point where the cost of petroleum production will have risen to a point where the economics of biofuel production will not only be feasible, but preferable. It is therefore in our best interest to continue to develop these technologies and make them more efficient so that we are prepared to transition away from non-renewable energy sources like petroleum. Next, we'll transition into a discussion of how the process will be modeled and the important decisions that were taking place. Shown here is a process flow diagram of the process for ABE fermentation. Typically, we start with raw material in the form of either lignocellulosic biomass, such as rice bran or corn stover, or raw, raw sugars, such as xylose and glucose. It moves on to a pretreatment stage where either acid hydrolysis, enzymatic hydrolysis, or size reduction takes place in order to make the raw material more suitable for fermentation. Next step, naturally, is the fermentation process. 
Here, the raw material is combined with the bacteria in the bioreactor, and the process is fermented, uh, and the solution is fermented until uh, acetone, butanol, and ethanol products are produced by the bacteria. Moving on from there, separation is required in order to separate out uh, the products of interest, in including getting separate streams for acetone, ethanol, and butanol, as well as a wastewater stream. Finally, pure ABE products are further refined through other separation techniques and uh, are used for their intended purposes, be that a biofuel, organic solvent, or others. One of the most important choices when considering how to model the process was to take a look at what feedstock would be used. Now, ultimately, the process ended up uh, bypassing some of the pretreatment steps, so it didn't have too much impact on our model, but it was an important discussion that we had. Uh, pictured here is corn and rice, which rice is a fundamental crop for 3.5 billion people worldwide. worldwide. Uh, and rice bran constitutes about 10% of all of that product which rice bran is the leaves and stems from the rice plants. These actually aren't e eaten by humans or animals, so they make an optional, optimal option for feedstock. Corn stover is very similar in the sense that corn stover is the leftover leaves and stalks from the corn. Uh, and while the kernels of the corn can be used for either human or animal consumption, the leaves are usually used only as uh, a fuel for burning, such in which can be used for heating. Uh, but if a process to convert the lignocellulosic biomass into sugars is achieved, then this feedstocks, both of these feedstocks can be used in ABE fermentation. As shown on this slide is what we call the process synthesis tree. Uh, and this is basically a diagram showing the important decisions that were made as the process was developed. Uh, so at the top, we start with our feedstock, uh, where we have really similar uh, three categories of choices, which would be a basic starch or sugar feedstock, um, molasses, or also uh, lignocellulosic biomass, such as corn stover or rice bran. Uh, all three of those Processors are going to require some form of pretreatment, so there's a decision to be made there as to what kind of pretreatment will be done. Uh, and then moving on, we look at the fermentation. And this uh, section below here is what was ended up uh, ended up being sim simulated in the um, mo model that we created. So there are a few different choices for fermentation. You can do a batch, fed batch, continuous, or occasionally continuous process with uh, product recovery, which would look something like in situ separation or um, vacuum filtration in between, or even a distillation column set up in between two separate um, continuous reactors. Or in the case of the slide here, you also have uh, liquid liquid extraction occurring in between these reactors. Uh, moving on to the post treatment, we look at a few different options. We could do distillation, gas stripping, membrane separation, or absor absorption. Uh, all of these are going to produce a waste stream and a pure product. And decisions was, were made based on what kinds of product concentrations we could achieve. And it ultimately just turned out that distillation was very, very useful for separating butanol, since butanol's uh, relative volatility is so much different than the other products. Uh, and that is how we made that decision there. Moving on, there are other important considerations that must be taken into account when thinking about how to model the ABE fermentation process. Uh, and these can be summed into three different categories, environmental, safety and health, and broader societal considerations. For environmental, uh, one of the main uh, advantages and desirable qual qual qualities of ABE fermentation is that it's significantly more environmentally friendly than petrochemical production uh, because the wastewater stream can be easily purified and you're not actually doing any kind of combustion to produce uh, smog or other uh, carbon, carbon footprint contributors. Uh, 
Uh, and it is inevitable that as fossil fuels begin, continue to be used up in our society, that a shift towards a more sustainable biofuel can, production will occur. Uh, and biobutanol, which can be produced through ABE fermentation, is a suitable replacement for gasoline. Uh, as far as safety and health considerations go, uh, our fermentation process is going to need to be heated, so there are, will be high temperatures uh, are, uh, necessary in the process, uh, as well as the toxicity of acetone, butanol, and ethanol needs to be considered, as well as any acid or enzyme solutions that are used in the pretreatment process. Uh, and as far as maybe not human health, but bacterial health, it is very important that the bioreactor be maintained at specific conditions to, so as to optimize the bioreactor growth and get the best product that we can. Uh, and these, some of the factors that influence that are oxygen concentration or the pH, and also the product concentration, because unfortunately butanol can actually be toxic to the bacteria we're using. So it's important that we are removing it at a rate that will keep the bacteria alive. Lastly, in the societal considerations, uh, as I mentioned a little bit on the feedstock slide, it is important to know that the feedstock must be chosen so that it does not interfere with current food production. Uh, and this is because if we're going to be taking a significant portion of, say, corn or sugarcane out of the human consumption, then to, in order to do ABE fermentation, then it might not actually have a positive effect at the end. Uh, and another societal con consideration is just that biobutanol is a good choice for a renewable energy source. Um, as I was mentioning before, it's a suitable replacement for gasoline or also for energy production. Uh, in terms of instead of burning oil or coal, we might be able to burn biobutanol. We must first consider the key assumptions made surrounding pretreatment, feed into the fermenter, and stoichiometric conversions. Pretreatment steps are based on assumptions and summaries from an NRO report from 2015 in which lignocellulosic bi biomass are converted into hydrocarbons via dilute acid and enzymatic deconstruction of the biomass to produce useful sugars and hydrocarbons to be fed into the fermenter. Additionally, assumptions for input ratios into the ferment fermenter come from a research article in which six conceptual process scenarios for the production of biobutanol from lignocellulosic biomass through ABE fermentation were modeled. And lastly, in regard to the conversion of sugar to, and hydrocarbons to products, another assumption was brought forth concerning the stoichiometric conversions and yield quantities of ABE fermentation. This information was provided from a published article in 2016. This is the model that we created using Super Pro Designer. In this model, all of the pretreatment steps have been ignored, and the model inputs are based on summaries from a report from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Additionally, this model did not include in situ separation methods due to limitations of the software. However, this model does serve to give a basic representation of the material balances, conversion rates, and energy requirements for the process. This is a list of the results and stream summaries from our model for all of the materials used and their associated characteristics. Paula will now be stepping in to talk about the methods of analysis for life cycle and techno-economics. In order to provide a holistic approach to the economic and environmental implications of ABE production, we use the following methods. The process modeling was done using the software SuperPro Designer to keep track of the materials and energy consumption of the process. These balances were then used to inform the techno-economic and life cycle analysis. The modeling was done using data and technical reports from literature and the facility was considered to process 7,680 tons of biomass per day. The techno-economic analysis was done using Visual Basic for application routines to do a discounted cash flow rate of return on a standalone facility over 30 years. The life cycle assessment was done using life cycle assessment methods from the International Standard Organization LCA principles and framework. And the system boundary we considered is from cradle to grave. 
that is, we accounted for the carbon dioxide sequestered into the biomass during cultivation, all the upstream emissions associated with production and distribution, and combustion of the fuel. The cumulative emissions for the process were grouped into the 10 categories of environmental impacts via the United States Environmental Protection Agency's tool for reduction and assessment of chemicals and other environmental impacts, or TRACY version 2.1. Up next, we'll use the results of the model to perform a techno-economic analysis of the model. The techno-economic analysis resulted in a minimum fuel selling price of about three cents per megajoule of butanol. Typical selling prices of other TEAs from literature done on ABE fermentation have resulted on minimum selling prices closer to six cents per megajoule. While our results are within that ballpark, we attributed our lower selling price to underestimation of the capital equipment used during fermentation and separation process, as well as differences associated with the biomass prices across feedstocks. The greater contributors to production costs were the operating costs. It is important to note that due to the simplicity of our model, our minimum fuel selling price includes estimates for capital equipment and operating variables associated with pretreatment of the biomass and upstream processing before the sugars enter the fermenter reactor, which is where our model actually starts. This was done using technical reports and models that process the same amount of similar types of biomasses that would result in a similar amount of sugars to be processed as it is in our facility. For clarity, we have included a more detailed breakdown of the operating costs associated with production. The greater contributors within this category were found to be the steam used for distillation columns during separation, the price of the biomass, and the other category. The other category includes the estimates for the operations associated with the drying and pretreatment of the biomass that are not included in our model. These contributions were found to be quite large. This is in agreement with literature, as pretreatment is usually a large portion of the production costs and continues to be a major drawback of biofuel production models from renewable energy, that is, crops. Now we will look at the model from a sustainability uh, viewpoint and specifically look at the results of a life cycle analysis that was conducted on the simulated model. The relative contributions of the tracy environmental impacts of our ABE fermentation model, including fermentation and distillation only, are shown here. We were able to quantify the different emissions associated with environmental sustainability and found that the greater contributors to this impact are due to combustion of the fuels produced, the steam used for separation, and water. Notice that in the global warming potential category, we account for sequestration of emissions into the biomass at the time of cultivation. Our results are comparable to the total emissions of similar ABE fermentation processes and are well below the impacts associated with conventional fuel production. Now we'll take a look back at everything that we created and draw some conclusions from what we learned. Some next steps for the process would be to find a way to better model the pretreatment process in either SuperPro Designer or a, a similar software. Uh, pretreatment was one aspect of this process that we knew we would have a difficult time modeling since it's really not a very well understood process uh, of how to convert lignocellulosic biomass to sugars, uh, especially when it is concerned with what we do with all the leftover lignin because a lot of the cellulose can be converted to either xylose or glucose, but the lignin is oftentimes ended up just being burned in the plant for uh, heat production. So finding a way to incorporate those things into the model would be uh, an excellent next step. The next portion that we would like to include would be to 
accurately model in situ separation for the process. And this could look something like liquid liquid extraction in between two separate reactors or gas stripping or a different separation technique in order to pull more of the product and drive the reaction further to completion. Uh, and it would also be beneficial to find a better way to model the bioreactor since what we ended up having to do was a stoichiometric reaction, uh, which isn't per a perfect approximation for bioreactor growth. Uh, lastly, it would be very beneficial to find a way to reduce the cost of this process so that it could match the petrochemical industry uh, and kind of drive us further towards that sustainable uh, and both, sus both sustainable and economic uh, future that we would desire. One where we're going to be using renewable energy sources such as uh, biobutanol and still have the same technological advances and other power needs that or we're still able to meet the power needs of a current society. Shown on this slide is just a few of the many references that we use throughout this project in order to get more in information about the model uh, and determine different separation techniques as well as market and competitive analysis for uh, the beginning of this project. Uh, we'd also like to extend a sincere thanks to Dr. Kenneth Reardon Dr. Christy Peebles, Dr. Jean Picard, uh, Evan Sproul, and Dr. John Sheehan for their continued support of our project and general guidance was very, very appreciated. Uh, thank you all for listening to this presentation. Have a great rest of your day.